Hello, I'm Dr. Raymond Dussaro your guest host of the ASCO Daily News podcast today. I'm the chief scientist at the Baptist Memorial Healthcare Corporation and director of the multidisciplinary thoracic oncology program and the thoracic oncology research group at the Baptist Cancer Center here in Memphis, Tennessee. I have the distinct delight of uh, serving as co-chair of 2023 ASCO Quality Care Symposium, and I am delighted to welcome my colleague, Dr. Cardinal Smith, who served as chair of the symposium. Dr. Smith is a professor in the Department of Medicine and Geriatrics and Palliative Medicine at the Tisch Cancer Institute at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York. Today, we'll be discussing solutions and key research to advance high-value, high-quality cancer care that were featured at the symposium. You'll find our full disclosures in the transcript of this episode, and disclosures of all guests on the podcast are available at asco.org forward slash dnpod. Dr. Smith, it's great to be speaking to you today. Thank you. I'm excited to be speaking with you as well. The Quality Care Symposium featured many novel approaches in care delivery, including innovative ways to advance health equity through supportive oncology. As a specialist in geriatrics and palliative medicine, your work has focused on supporting the needs of patients with cancer. What are the innovations in supportive oncology that you were excited about at the meeting? So I think we had several really fantastic sessions that discussed this at the meeting. One of the key themes that came up around innovations in palliative care delivery was the roundtable discussion we had on innovations in palliative care delivery for marginalized populations and delivering this in a culturally competent way. And the speakers really focused on community-engaged approaches to the delivery of palliative and supportive care interventions. In the roundtable discussion, the speakers talked about utilizing the community voice and incorporating that into work to describe and enhance models of care delivery. Dr. Manali Patel discussed her work on the transformative impact of patient navigators who focused on palliative care skills, in particular communication, symptom discussions, and how that contributed to the improved outcomes of patients with advanced cancer. They saw reductions in mortality lower acute care use, greater palliative care and hospice use, and lower total costs. Dr. Mao discussed a virtual mind-body fitness program to reduce unplanned hospitalizations among patients undergoing active cancer treatments. And Dr. Erin presented her results of a randomized trial of patient-centered collaborative care for adults with serious mental illness who were newly diagnosed with cancer. I mean, I think these discussions just really centered on centering patients and really focusing on supporting their care. And then finally, I was really excited to hear Dr. Deborah Mayer of UNC Leinberger Comprehensive Cancer Center, who received the Joseph Simone Quality Care Award. And she spoke about her distinguished career on how we can do better for our patients and ourselves. And what stood out for me was her recognition of the importance of quote unquote teaming. And she really talked about acknowledging that before there was terminology for it. And it struck me because it remains so critically important in terms of how we advance the science and delivery of cancer. Yeah, that's the Josie Moen Award lecture was amazing. I got to tell you, though, that that, uh, Manali Patel's presentation blew me away. You know, the video of the veterans talking about end-of-life care and the tough decisions, how they got to where men chills down my spine, you know? Yeah. And I think what's even more incredible, right, is that the folks who were helping to lead those conversations were not people who spent an incredible amount of time going to school to learn how to do this, right? They were folks from the community who we're just engaging with people in conversations about their values. What an original way to tackle the wicked problem. Just amazing. So improving clinician well-being was also a key topic at the meeting. Speakers addressed oncology workforce shortages and novel approaches for improving team-based care and delivery. So Cardi, what are your key takeaways from these sessions? 
I mean, improving team-based care delivery is essential as a healthcare system can feel fragmented for patients and honestly, us as clinicians as well. I think I took away that there has to be an organizational and systems-based approach to really improving this issue if we're going to make meaningful and impactful change. We were presented with data that shows that this really isn't a one-size-fits-all approach and what might work for physicians as a group does not work for APPs or nursing. And we really have to think about all of these different groups based on what they need. I think what was also really impactful was Caroline Schenkel presented on ASCO's Center for Research and Analytics, the Centra data on the state of the oncology workforce. And that data really assessed changes in the well being of US based ASCO physician members and compared the responses today in 23 to a decade ago. And unfortunately, burnout and satisfaction with work-life integration appears to have significantly worsened. And while that's not really surprising, it's disappointing. You know, there were some factors that contributed to joy in work life, and that was speaking with and advising patients, as well as enhanced practice support, inclusive of administrative, patient care, and staffing. So I do think that gives us some information that we can use to go forward to focus on strategies we should be really encouraging and leaning in towards. I think it was Dr. Subaya that made the point. It's not just yoga, right? Don't tell people, go do yoga and get happy at work again. You got to tackle the fundamental cause of the problem, which is this crazy workload and additional uh, tangential obligations that we have that have taken over the core mission, right, of patient care. Absolutely. No one needs another pizza party. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't that the truth? I want to ask you some questions. I'm going to turn the tables on you now. Sure. So let's talk about some emerging technologies. You know, we talked about some art. We had artificial intelligence session at the meeting and specifically focusing on how AI will potentially impact quality care. Ray, tell me, what are some of your takeaways from these sessions? Yeah, so AI obviously is a hot topic, you know, in this day and age. It was wonderful. I had the privilege of chairing the session for the promise and perils of AI in oncology. So we had a nice group of speakers. We had Danielle Biederman from Dana-Farber kind of telling us what, what is AI and what does it promise us? And then Andrew Hantel from the same institution did a wonderful job. He actually co-chaired that session with me and did a wonderful job sort of describing for us the perils. And then Julian Hong uh, told us a little bit about, especially from the perspective of radiation oncology, that AI really promises to do all kinds of wonderful things. So the huge promise of AI from back office to front office across this full spectrum of oncology, be it you know, radiology, radiation oncology, and so on and so forth, were covered. And I would strongly urge that anybody who listens to this podcast should go to that session. It was a Saturday morning session. Lots of learnings uh, to be had. So Andrew, you know, Hantel talked about perils. You know, for example, this AI black box. We don't really understand when he tells us this is the thing. This is the answer to your question. How does it arrive at that? How can we tell that the answers we're getting are correct or incorrect? And if we were wanting to validate, how do we go back to do so is a, is a real problem. And then, the, you know, one of the take homes was, yeah, you can call it all the things you want, but it's still fundamentally garbage in, garbage out. So this m- machine learning, if the material fed the machine is garbage, the answers you'll get back will will still be garbage. And we had Don Hirschman really give a wonderful panorama of, of how, yeah, AI is just another tool. You know, it's not a panacea. We still got the same problems. It's a new tool. And we're still going to have to apply it using the same frameworks as we have always applied in all of science uh, today. And then there was a uh, an abstract that was presented from the UK. Uh, this young lady, Bia Bakshi, uh, presented a paper, abstract 74, accuracy of an AI prediction platform in predicting tumor origin in a real-world study. I would urge anybody who is interested in this to go back and watch that. I was waiting a little bit for them to talk to me about how the bots were going to take over. 
<laughs> but I guess we're not quite there yet. And Dr. Fleischer also added a lot of commentary. He was the former chief medical officer and director of the Center for Clinical Standards and Quality at the U.S. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And he gave the keynote lecture. What did you think about what some of what he had to add to this conversation? Yeah, it was an interesting uh, keynote. It was certainly one of the highlights of the program. You know, he, he talked about measuring and driving quality of care in the future. And the thing that struck me was that was how he actually covered the full spectrum of the topics that we dealt with in the symposium, including AI, by the way, which was uh, quite remarkable. I think anybody interested, I would highly recommend that they go and watch that video. Yeah, I agree. I think he really did add an incredible amount to the conversation. And it was interesting to hear about, you know, I think as much as we think CMS has control over so much of what we do, so much of it is controlled and regulated that in the end, they are just an, a body that oversees. And I think he really, he really talked about that and hit that home. So it is something definitely that the folks who are listening should go check out if they have a moment. Yeah, you know, the thing, like, one thing that struck me that it, it, it threw away comments he made was how few physicians there were at CMS. What was it? He said, was it 30 something, 40 something in the, on the regulatory side? Yeah, it was less than 40. Wow. High 30s. Surprising. Yeah. There aren't that many physicians that actually work there, and yet they are driving so much of the decision making. Yeah. Wow. So, Cardi, let's talk about the session, the very big, I think you introduced that session on day one, the perfect storm of high cost novel therapeutics. Are we leaving patients out to see? Yeah, that, I mean, it was an incredible way, in my opinion, to start the conference. I think that the, the speakers really came out strong, setting the stage on really the perfect storm. I mean, I think as we are developing more and more high cost novel therapeutics, you know, the first speaker, Haley Moss, talked about how all of these approvals are leading to these accelerated pricing of drugs and how, you know, really this is unsustainable. We continue to get new and new drugs that are working, right? I mean, we have longer life expectancies for patients with cancer. That's the good news. Right? That's the good news. Right. Somebody has to pay for it. Correct. <laughs> Correct. And the longer you live, right, yeah. the harder it is to be able to sustain this. And, you know, people are going into bankruptcy for it. And then Arjun Gupta came in and he talked about, you know, really thinking about these supportive care drugs and supportive care meds and how we tend not to think about those medications but they are medications that are not highly, highly regulated and yet also are very costly. And I think what stood out for me most from this uh, the panel, this discussion was really the patient, the patient herself, Dr. Kelly Shanahan. She is a physician, an ob guy who no longer practices and was diagnosed with a cancer, has breast metastatic breast cancer. And she really talked about how cancer put her into near bankruptcy, yeah. right? And the cost implications to someone who is someone whom we would consider, right, in the top echelon of the financial spectrum. Yeah. You want know, you know what my, high, my uh, favorite abstract was? It was abstract number 300. Okay. Tell me about it. Uh, Kasim Husseini, I just, he had this access to a unique data set of uh, patients calling in for uh, free legal assistance after diagnosis of uh, cancer. So he had this abstract nationwide analysis of legal barriers impacting patients with cancer and their caregivers. Just, I, I sat there just in awe of, uh, you know, the uniqueness of his approach. I, to my knowledge, uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody tackle this problem in such an original way. Learned a lot from it. And I would, I would definitely recommend it. It's a rapid oral abstract. Yeah. In fact, while we were sitting there in the conference, I was texting the director of social worker, oncology social work at my institution and asking her if she heard of the organization that he worked with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd like to highlight 
a last great session for the listeners. And it was really the last session of the conference. And I know sometimes folks don't always get to see or hear the last session. And so I would strongly encourage folks to check it out. This was the one on the promises and the pitfalls of liquid biopsy cancer detection tests in the asymptomatic population. I like that session because it highlighted where we are in terms of thinking about diagnosing cancers among those who are asymptomatic. And it also highlighted really also a lot of questions that we have in terms of what do we do with those results and made things, I think, thought-provoking in terms of who should be the responsible parties for that information. Does it fall to the primary care group? Does it fall to oncologists? And I think it was good to know that the end, this is something that's top of mind for NCI and that they're really putting together a toolkit to think through this and to really make that package that together for clinicians. You know, and I have to give you credit, Cardi. This was fabulous. The meeting was from end to end, just superb. And the attendance, the attendance was record breaking. Congratulations. Thank you. You are a fabulous partner. We had wonderful committee members and the ASCO staff, as usual, is amazing. Yes, we have to do this again in San Francisco next year. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Dr. Smith, for coming on the podcast to give us these highlights from the 2023 ASCO Quality Care Symposium. Our listeners will find the links to the sessions that we discussed on the transcript of this episode. Thank you, Ray. It was my pleasure. And thank you to our listeners for your time today. If you value the insights that you hear on the ASCO Daily News podcast, please take a moment to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you. The purpose of this podcast is to educate and to inform. This is not a substitute for professional medical care and is not intended for use in the diagnosis or treatment of individual conditions. Guests on this podcast express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions. Guest statements on the podcast do not express the opinions of ASCO. The mention of any product, service, organization, activity, or therapy should not be construed as an ASCO endorsement. 